Hello children, welcome to online session. Today we will learn a new chapter from biology, life processes. So from the name it suggests that these are the processes which are very important to maintain the life. So life of unicellular organisms, it doesn't require a complex mechanism to maintain the life. Simple diffusion processes are enough for them. Whereas multicellular organisms, the cells, group of cells combine to form tissues and group of tissues combine to form organs. And therefore, the mechanism is complex in multicellular organisms to maintain the life. Therefore, the processes involved in maintaining the life of a Life are nutrition, respiration, transportation and excretion. Nutrition is a process in which uh, living things obtain food. Living things when we say it is plants and other organisms. Plants are autotrophs which prepare their own food whereas heterotrophs are those living things which obtain food from autotrophs. And what is the nutrition process exactly? It is absorbing that food whether it is prepared on its own or from, the, from autotrophs. So respiration is a process in which the food breaks down in the cells to release energy and this conversion is happening in the respiration process and also uh, breathing that is inhalation of oxygen by living organisms happens in respiration. Moving on to transportation. Transportation. What is being transported in human beings or any living things? That is, the living things or living organisms require energy. The energy comes from the food. This food has to be transported to all parts of the body. And this function is done by the organ, muscular organ, heart in human beings and many other organisms. What is the function of the heart? The heart pumps the blood which carries food, carbon dioxide and nitrogenous waste. All, all across the body and so what are the parts of the heart it is a muscular organ it is muscular so that it can pump the blood effectively and there are four chambers in the heart two on each that is uh, on the right hand side what we see is a left atrium and left ventricle on the left hand side is a right atrium and right ventricle these two ventricles are separated by septum which is a dividing wall so that the oxygenated blood is get, kept separated from the deoxygenated blood so how is the oxygenated blood taken to all parts of the body? The deoxygenated blood enters the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava carries the blood from all parts of the body to the heart. So the upper part of the body is taken care by the superior vena cava and the lower part of the body is taken care by the inferior vena cava. They bring in the deoxygenated blood to right atrium. And at that point of time, these valves which divide the atrium and the ventricles are closed. And the atrium expands so that it collects all the blood, deoxygenated blood entering the heart. Once it gets collected, the valves open, the atrium relax and the ventricles expand. So to collect all the blood and then from the ventricle, it is taken to the pulmonary arteries. At this point of time, the valves are closed. So these deoxygenated blood is carried by pulmonary arteries to lungs. Why is it carried to the lungs? So that it will get oxygen rich blood. So the lungs provide oxygen rich blood and that enters the pulmonary veins through left atrium. When entering the valves are closed, the atrium expands, it collects the blood and once it collects, the left atrium relaxes, the valves open up by ventricles so that all the oxygenated blood is collected in the left ventricle and once it is collected the valves are closed and it is pushed or pumped to iota which is one of the biggest artery to all parts of the body so the deoxygenated blood is carried by iota to all parts of the body so what we have seen is that the blood enters the heart twice during each cycle of of passage through the body in few vertebrates like mammals and birds. So what exactly is double circulation? Here what we see is the deoxygenated blood which enters the heart is taken away by pulmonary arteries to lungs and when they reach the lungs these pulmonary arteries divide into smaller and smaller blood vessels and they become so small that the wall of the 
blood vessel becomes one cell thick and they are called as capillaries and this is so thin because there will be an exchange of material easily that is what kind of exchange it is the deoxygenated blood will get exchanged with the oxygenated blood from the lungs and now this oxygenated blood enters the heart through pulmonary vein and comes out of the heart by iota once this iota reaches different parts of the organs in the body they again divide into smaller and smaller blood vessels to capillaries so that there will be an exchange of material that is they carry the deoxygenated blood from the organs and join together to form veins that is vena cava from the inferior part of the body and superior vena cava from the upper part of the body and enters the heart again so the blood is entering twice this helps in maintaining the body temperature that is when the blood is being pumped by the ventricles the temperature increases and which maintains the body of the which maintains the temperature of the body so this is important in mammals and birds whereas in fishes and other uh, lower species animals like reptiles and few amphibians they don't have double circulation but they have single circulation wherein their body temperature need not be maintained like in mammals and birds and the separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is also not up to the mark when compared to double circulation we have seen that capillaries have very thin walls which is of one cell thick to for the exchange of materials so when they exchange materials some amount of plasma protein and blood cells escape into the intercellular spaces which are which form a tissue fluid called as lymph and these lymph drains into lymphatic capillaries from the intercellular spaces which join to form large lymph vessels that finally open into larger veins lymph they they carry digested and absorbed fat from intestine and drains excess fluid from extracellular space back into the blood so we have seen we have also seen that there is a network of tubes called as blood vessels right artery and veins when there is any rupture in one of the blood vessel the entire transport system of blood gets disturbed therefore in the blood we have platelet cells which circulate around the body and plug these leaks by helping to clot the blood at these points of injury transportation and plants plants are autotrophs that is they prepare their own food for energy and this food is prepared in leaves during the process of photosynthesis this food and energy must be transported from leaves to other parts of the plant till the roots and from the roots the raw materials like water and minerals from the soil must be transported to other parts of the plant and this is done by xylem and phloem which are called as vascular tissues together they are called as vascular bundles where are these bundles located in the leaves stem and the roots so what is xylem doing the xylem helps to move the water and minerals obtained from the soil from roots to other parts phloem transports products of photosynthesis from the leaves where they are synthesized to other parts of the plant so how is water transported in plants it is done by the vascular tissue xylem xylem is present in root stem as well as in leaves right so the minerals which are present in the soil contain ions but ions are less in the xylem cells which are present in the root so there will be a difference in the concentration of ions between the soil and the root xylem this creates a root pressure therefore there will be a water column which is steadily created between the xylem cells and the soil therefore this root pressure is driving the water upwards but this root pressure is not sufficient enough to transport the water to the aerial parts aerial parts are nothing but the top layers of the plants or trees which are leaves so therefore this root along with this root pressure there is another process called as transpiration transpiration is nothing but losing the water from the aerial parts of the plant how is this happening we have stomata in the leaves which opens and closes for gaseous exchange when this happens when the stomata opens for gaseous exchange there is also a loss of water from this stomata opening and this creates a pressure or the driving force for the water to move upwards to the aerial part therefore there are two things or force which creates 
the water to move upwards that is one is root pressure the other one is transpiration these are the driving forces for the transport of water from the root to aerial parts not only the water even the minerals from the soil the root pressure which is created here because of the difference in the concentration of the ions and the transpiration which is happening through stomata transport of food food is prepared in the leaves during photosynthesis the products of photosynthesis are sugars like glucose sucrose along with it the energy is also released in the form of atp that is adenosine triphosphate so the transport of soluble products of photosynthesis the products which are formed during photosynthesis are soluble that is easily dissolved in water the transport of such products is called as translocation and this happens in the vascular tissue called as phloem with through sieve tubes and companion cells that you see in the picture on the right hand side so the translocation of the food uses energy which energy does it use unlike the xylem which was using a root pressure and transpiration here the translocation of the food products uses the atp energy which is released during photosynthesis so this energy moves sucrose to the phloem tissues and this creates an osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is which has which is created when there is high concentration of water on one side and the low concentration of water on the other side therefore the water is moved into the phloem which pushes the material like sucrose to the areas where it has less pressure therefore the material or the products like sucrose and other substances like amino acids are pushed to areas where it grows or from the storage areas to the growing areas storage areas could be fruits and seeds and the growing areas would be buds so this is how the translocation of the food happens in plants with the help of vascular bundle xylem and phloem the translocation of the food is by phloem and the movement of water is by xylem so now moving on to excretion in human beings so we all know that excretion is a process which involves removal of wastes from the blood what type of wastes nitrogenous wastes like urea and uric acid so these metabolic wastes must be removed from the blood this process is called as excretion so the excretory system includes a pair of kidneys a pair of ureters here urethra and urinary bladder kidneys are located on the either side of the backbone in the abdomen their function is to produce urine the purpose of making urine is to filter out waste products from the blood just like the lungs make use of alveoli to filter out carbon dioxide from the blood kidneys make use of a functional unit called as nephron to do this nephrons are the filtration units present in the kidneys they are present in large numbers in both the kidneys they are a cluster of thin walled capillaries and each cluster ends as a cup like structure called as bowman's capsule this bowman's capsule collects the filtrate entering through it and this filter when it passes through the tube the amino acids and other substances are reabsorbed based on the water content present in the blood and this filtrate or the urine which is produced is collected in the collecting tube and then it is taken to the ureters a pair of ureters which leads to the urinary bladder the urine is stored in the urinary bladder which is a muscular organ until there is an urge to pass the urine the urinary bladder holds the urine and it is controlled the movement is controlled by nervous system therefore it can be con controlled the urge to urinate can be controlled excretion in plants what type of excretory products do the plants get rid of it can be excess water through transpiration that is loose loss of water by aerial parts of the plants or trees the waste products can be stored in the leaves that will fall off when they are dry it can also be stored in cellular vacuoles or in the form of resins and gums and there are waste products which are sent into the soil around them this is how the plants get rid of their excretory products or the waste products uh, with this children we end the chapter life processes 
i'll meet you in the next session thank you